Hi guys, I'm Shmi and welcome back to another video where you join me in Switzerland to explore the pinnacle in automotive luxury, the new Rolls-Royce Phantom 8. And today I'm going to show you all around the new car, take it for a little drive, have a look at the front and the rear and see what's gone into what is arguably the most luxurious car in the world. <laughs> Let's get started with a summary walk around. I'm going to show you some of the details and features of this glorious new car before going for a short drive and then taking a proper look at all of the luxuries that you can find inside. Now this is actually the eighth generation Phantom. It's been around for 92 years since first introduction and we've brought the car today to this wonderful location at the top of the Susten Pass in Switzerland, surrounded by snow, mountains and lovely roads and a very special car to be taking a look at. Now one can expect this car is going to have quite a decent lifespan. The previous generation, the seventh generation car, lasted 14, 15 years or so and seven and a half thousand of them were built. Expectation is for about 500 of these per year. But let's take a little look around and talk about some of the design elements, some of the luxuries, some of the features and the details of the new Phantom 8. And starting around the front, it's still immediately recognisable, very distinctly Rolls-Royce. It's actually a touch shorter than the previous generation car. It's available in the regular platform or also the extended wheelbase version, which sits slightly longer. Around the front, the very distinct Rolls-Royce grille finished with the gold-plated Spirit of Ecstasy on the top of this car, but the grille is now integrated into the bodywork, into the shapes of the car, rather than protruding out of the front. That's flanked either side by new headlights with LED technology and surrounded by a rather nice finisher that we'll take more of a look at later on. It has a new active suspension system, so the ride is even more like a magic carpet than the previous generations have been so famed for. And that's supported by the latest technology. We're here in the upper part of the windshield. There are three cameras that are monitoring the road ahead and actively adjusting the suspension to smooth out the ride over potholes and bumps and the like. And the car has self-leveling, as we've seen before, so the car will sit as flat as possible wherever you leave it. And one small little detail that you might be familiar with, the RR badge in the center of the wheels will always be parked the right way up. It rotates to adjust itself correctly. Now, as we look at the design of the side of the car, you'll notice that the main power line always leads up and forwards, very much showing the progressive nature of the car. Continuing down, there's a large volume of color separated by the two doors that open in traditional Phantom style, suicidally towards the rear and forwards, where we get a quick glimpse here at this voluptuous interior. And this car's finish inside in Arctic white, supported by navy blue. And it is a beautiful place. Now I'm going to start at the rear here, just quickly, so you can catch a glimpse of the two-seat configuration. I'll go over all of the options and features that you have back here, but it is beautiful. In the front, you have more of the mahogany wood that you can see, and this new gallery. So this ability here to customize and install your own artworks and bespoke commissions into that part of the car. It's really quite a special thing. As we come round, one new feature. You can close the doors with a touch of the sensor on the door handle, which is new now in the latest generation. And they will shut. As we continue to the wards of the rear, very familiar. You can see this new power line that's painted surrounding the main body of the upper bog of the colour, contrasting with the golden coach line that now follows that new shape along the side of the car. So let me come round and just jump into the driver's seat very quickly to show you the view that the driver will have, whether you're driving the car or being chauffeured in it from the back. So you step in where the buttons to close the doors are mounted here. That will close and you're greeted by the sound of silence. Welcome to New Phantom. It is very, very, very quiet in here. And that's been my first experience riding in the car is quite how much it is a new world of tranquility. 
it's up to six or seven decibels quieter than the previous model, which was already almost silence when you're riding in it. We'll talk more about the sound deadening and the development that went into the tyres. That is a crazy story. But what we're looking at is a new digital display, still finished with the chrome surrounds to give it a tr traditional image. But as we start it up, we'll bring that 6.75 litre, 563 horsepower, twin turbocharged V12 into life. And the view across the bonnet of the Spirit of Ecstasy there, it's well, you can barely hear it, and it has 900 newton meters of torque. But let's go and discover New Phantom and see what it's like. For my first experience, we're going to jump into the back and discover being chauffeured. So, Christian Vetak, product manager. Hello. Thank you very much. We will jump in and experience the car from the rear. So I can now press the button back here, or as Christian has done from the outside, and the door will close. And welcome to the back where we're going to discover the mountain pass with the luxury of the suspension system in this car. So you can have a number of options for the rear of the car. You can have the configuration with a folding armrest or with a fixed centre console or you can have um, the full seats as well which I think we'll be able to see later on. Are you ready so, to go? I am indeed. And even in the bright sunshine, we can just see little bits of the Starlight Headliner. That's something to again look at later on. But the first sensation is the quietness. You get moving and it's completely serene and relaxing and, and tranquil. You can barely hear anything as we start to move off and make a move down towards these stunning views in the valley here. But sat in the back, you've got vast amounts of legroom, even in the standard wheelbase car. And you can move the seat that's sitting in front from the back. You can control the front seat by enabling the mode there and then sliding that forwards to have even more space. And of course, the extended wheelbase version offers even more. Then in your central console here, you can fold open a motorized table. and then the screen as well, which of course offers you all sorts of information. Uh, navigation, should we choose to see on the screen the view of this road that we're driving around. Scroll that down to the map of various other bits of car information as well. And that's all quite neatly integrated there. And you can close it back up as well by pressing the button. And away it goes. But really, the thing about being in the back here is even on a road like this, when we're going around some seriously tight corners, you just feel very, very relaxed. It's so, so super smooth and calm. And I mean, look at this view. Look at this view. So off in the front there, how, how is this to drive? I love it. <laughs> Great experience. It just oozes elegance and I, I yeah. It's hard, it's hard to drive it. It's hard to describe. It is the the most extraordinary luxury to be so calm in this environment. As we enter into the tunnel here, you can catch a proper glimpse of the Starlight Headliner, which is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And we emerge back out into the sunshine, and if you have the fixed armrest, it would have a fridge in here, but in this car, it's located inside the back rest here, where you have your cooling fridge armed with champagne glasses, should you be that way inclined. Bottle of water today, though. Close that back up. Of course, you can fold up the armrest and, and have the fifth central seat there but everything, I mean, the carpets, they're deeper than anybody probably has carpets at their home. Very, very soft. There's a raisable uh, footrest controlled from here, from the side, which lifts up for even more comfort. The seats can lie down into an amazing seating position just by moving it forwards, where you then have these lovely, lovely pillow headrests surrounded here with the cobalto blue stitching and piping. 
contrasting on the arctic white seats of the interior. It is truly elegant. Now, Christian, I've thoroughly enjoyed my ride in the back of the car, but you've been working on this project for five years, from inception all the way through to seeing them all now on the roads. That must be quite special. Absolutely. For me, an outstanding experience. First time and then in such an environment, on the road, fully finished, perfect. And if you had to pick, say, one feature, your favourite aspect of the new car, does something stand out? Well, quite clearly, my, my favourite feature is the auto-closing from the exterior. So okay. it's not even pressing a button, it's just touching a button and magically the door will close. It's a very smooth process, as I demonstrated before. In terms of building it, though, the engineering side, there must have been a lot of challenges, things you had to develop. Yeah. I mean, talking about challenges, probably the gallery, the new feature, mm -hmm. That's the, that was the biggest challenge. Which I haven't actually shown in much detail. Let's jump in and just take a, a better look at the gallery, if that's okay. So I'll just come around to, to this side and we can show it in more detail in here. So the gallery section, let's just close the door and return to near on silence. So talk, talk us through. Yeah, um, that area we call the gallery and what is new, I mean, it's an additional stage for personalization. It's protected with a glass. So it's a real glass running from left to right. The full width. Um, which gives us the opportunity to introduce materials, new materials to the car, so precious materials, things you would never be able to have in the car. You see a leather execution here. We're offering wood, we're offering metal, we're offering fabric. And um, on the long run, our customers will have the opportunity to bring any kind of art installation into the car if they want to. So they could install a piece of artwork from a famous painter or photographer or anything? Yes, anything. The options are endless, so if I had one I could have little model cars in there. Why not? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> that would be mine. And this is the Arctic White. Yeah, we call, we call it uh, Regatta Sales. Mm -hmm. Arctic White Leather wrapped around um, carbon fiber blades. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then also the bespoke clock, so just a kind of like wow. bring the quality level up to as much as, as possible. And the traditional elements of a Rolls Royce, the, the loudest thing you can hear inside <laughs> is the ticking of the clock. Although yeah. you can't. <laughs> it's more true than ever. <laughs> um, absolutely. Well, I think we should jump back on the road. It is now my turn to drive and the new generation of Phantom is positioned slightly more towards being self-driven. Close the door with the button, naturally. Start up the engine. You have different customers in different markets around the world. For example, in the US, you're more likely to find customers self-driving their Phantoms. In China, you're more likely to find customers being chauffeur-driven. So again, you have a distribution between the regular car and the extended wheelbase. But here we are, we have the eight-speed automatic geolocation uh, gearbox, the satellite location gearbox that knows where you are so it can set up the car based on what you're doing. It's also actively detecting as you drive the kind of roads, the kind of style, so it can adjust based on that as well. And then up front is that 6.75 litre twin turbocharged V12. It has 571 PS and 900 newton metres of torque. That is more than say a McLaren has in a supercar. So it's effortless and you get that from 1,700 RPM. Not that you have a rev counter, you have the power reserve gauge currently showing 100% because we haven't started moving. But let's very slowly get on the move. And this is the thing with the Rolls Royce, you want to be very delicate with the steering wheel, just gentle touches, because pretty much the loudest thing you're going to hear in the car is the movement of the hands on the leather of the steering wheel. And I don't know if you noticed actually when I stepped in how much quieter it got as I closed the door from the waterfall that was alongside us. But we're on the move. It's so peaceful. You could hear a pin drop in here. It's actually surprisingly less intimidating than you might expect. It obviously has this incredibly trick system with the suspension that has the flag bearer. Those cameras named the flag bearer because when the motor car was introduced, cars had to be led by a flag bearer. So that's how it's named and that allows obviously the suspension to preempt what's coming and adapt ahead of that. It also now has four-wheel steering, so the rear axle can steer by three degrees. That 
varies at the speed at which it will change, but at low speed in the opposite direction to the front wheels will give you increased maneuverability. Uh, the radius for the turning circle of the new Phantom, to compare it loosely, the extended wheelbase of the new Phantom has a similar turning circle to the short regular wheelbase of the previous generation, so significantly improved, and then stability at speed as well. Now the craziest thing for me is just being in here makes me want to talk so peacefully to not disturb the uh, sounds in the car and as we go through the tunnels I've got some drips on the windscreen so automatic wipers and all those features and that's the thing this car is loaded with technology but Rolls-Royce customers don't necessarily want to know everything that their car has they just want it to be there so it comes very very highly equipped on that front with all of the 360 degree cameras adaptive cruise control safety systems mechanisms and like I mentioned the system for the gearbox that can predict what you're doing and what you want from it but you do also have a button on the stalk so the gears are chosen by the stalk there are no paddles or anything to manually interact but you have the low button which will typically hold it one gear lower at all stages which is slightly sportier if that's what you, you want in this kind of environment let's say to get on that power slightly earlier and you'll get 0 to 62 miles per hour in 5.3 seconds so a 2560 kilo car gets moving fast now it also goes up to a top speed governed to 155 miles per hour and no doubt it would just be cruising effortlessly with this engine at that power at that speed because of how much power it has and just being very capable around the corner we go and it does turn quite tightly and the suspension works so well on leveling and keeping the car so stable and steady the steering wheel is thin the sides what you're holding is very old school in style effortless you can turn it with one finger if you wanted to be silent on the wheel and you just let it take you along in this calmness and elegant tranquility that nothing else in the world can come close to matching it's time to explore some of the features that I've alluded to or mentioned so far in a little bit more detail. I'm gonna start with the contact point to the ground, the tires for the Rolls-Royce Phantom. Now these are particularly trick and the amount of development that went into making them by Continental is fairly crazy. So they produced 180 different sets of tires for the 21 inch and 22 inch wheels on the Phantom. Inside, they have two kilos per wheel of sound deadening foam to make the ride even quieter because otherwise the size of the tire creates a chamber for sound to echo around and that's just eight kilos of the 130 kilos of sound deadening material that is used all around the car in the roof in the floor and everywhere you can imagine to keep this car as quiet as we've been experiencing it. Now the Phantom itself is actually based on Rolls-Royce's own architecture, the new aluminium frame, one that can be adjusted, made smaller for a potential future car, made larger for a potential future SUV that we're expecting to see at some point in the not too distant future. Now that obviously helps them with all sorts of development going forwards, but you just walk around it, it has such an elegance to it. And I, I know I've said that, you start at the front and you look at those solid sides that give it huge presence as it's coming towards you. The squared shape almost across the top, surrounded by those headlights again that I mentioned earlier, which are matrix LED. They have the running light around them, surrounding the outside of the two sets, the two distinct parts that you can see on the inside. But very clever technology again found there. The huge single piece front grille, proud and prominent at the front, underneath the gold-plated Spirit of Ecstasy, which if you were wondering, is a £40,000 option over the top of the silver-plated Spirit of Ecstasy at the front. So, popular in some markets, and quite striking against the navy at the top sections of this car. That active suspension, it's all a new setup. They had passive uh, suspension before, it's got 30 to 40% larger air spring volume to make that all possible, so it really has moved two generations further on. Now the car has so much tech. The cameras, the four cameras in total for the 360 degree vision, you can see on the door mirrors on the underside, one at the front, one at the rear. The extra cameras at the front for the suspension control and the lane departure warnings and that side of things. It has radar for adaptive cruise control, the park distance sensors, the ultrasonic sensors naturally, the night vision 
camera that we're familiar with so it is loaded up from that perspective if we come back to the inside to show you in here a little bit more with the headliner which it's hard to see in the light that we have today it's quite bright out here as you can tell but that headliner can be customized to look like the day that you were born you can bespoke and configure it and at night it is so so super smart you wouldn't believe and as we move down towards the dashboard everything in here that looks like it's made out of wood or metal is genuinely made out of wood or metal so the mahogany here the lovely finishes for the air vents this is how you open and close them with those toggles and moving back towards the leather seats these rear seats are actually positioned slightly pivoted towards the center which allows the two occupants at the rear to feel more part of a conversation with one another and then if you turn on the seat heating it's not just the seat that heats now it's also the panels around the seat the armrest so you have the whole area of warmth around you which is something i've not come across before and one interesting thing is the toggles for the uh, temperature they're still these old school traditional style dials and levers no digital panels or displays which gives you that traditional feel and a lot of this car does that it feels very traditional but it works with this character it's what this car is about i notice these two vents just here um, just inside the door pillar and if we come a little bit further around you are probably familiar with what we have right here the rolls royce umbrella one of each or one on each side for the rear passenger doors and these are finished in navy and white to match the colors of the car that's a custom bespoke option uh, on this car specifically so if you pop that back in very easy click done then you come around to the door where you swipe it and off it goes and closes again so i'm gonna head back to the front for a moment just talk a little bit more about the driver technology that we have in here i'll climb into the car the start button is just down there so we'll fire it up for a moment power reserve bar showing 100 percent and the glass on these windows the reason it's so quiet when i close this there are two six millimeter pieces of glass with a piece of foil between them to insulate the sound completely and you can hear how much louder that bike was as soon as i opened the door made a huge difference soft close as well on those two and then like i mentioned before 12.3 inch tft in the central display that shows you surrounded by the chrome bezels there's not a huge amount you can change on the steering wheel you've got your adaptive cruise control settings your phone call settings on on the other side obviously down here you've got your mirrors uh, mirrors and your window buttons and all the seat controls if i just open the door again quickly you can see the illuminated side sill phantom side sill here you have your seat controls and lumbar support uh, in the position of the seat down on the side as well you can control from the driver's seat the driver's door and the passenger's door I'm giving it a good test here aren't i but it's doing what it should working very well and then the central screen the navigation screen which is the iDrive system uh, it's pretty much the only thing in here that comes from and BMW, you can actually tuck that away if you want a full view of the gallery. So you can open it and close it as you like. Bops back up. And this is all made inside the clean room in Goodwood at the Rolls Royce factory. So dust can't get in there. That's something I was wondering. It's all fully sealed off uh, with the electronics and everything to ensure that it will stay perfect forever and anything that's built as part of the gallery. And this is a tier two gallery. You have tier one, which is a standard finish, either um, a plain leather or, or uh, standard material finish. Then you have tier two, which adds some 3D texture to it. And then tier three, which is when you go completely bespoke and create your own gallery style. And it's possible to spend six figures or more on what you have um, going on through there. Then continuing further down, much like the rear, it's all mahogany, lovely finishes, the climate control toggles have a nice feel to them. It's very old school, but it just feels luxurious. They're super light to move, turning on your air conditioning with these almost responsive dials. They sprung into place. It's all just very nice. Down here, you've got a little pocket storage bucket. This side, you've got the cup holder storage. Close those back up. You have a storage tray here where we've got a key for the car with matching leather. A key ring on it here. 
So if you're wondering, this is the Phantom Key. Nice solid piece. Feels good. Put that back in there for the moment. Lots of storage, glove box, door pockets, and everything you expect. And this really nice Arctic white and navy blue contrast all around. So let's just stop the car for a moment. That button there, by the way, is for your assistance systems and settings, and then your headlights and the head up display. Let me show you the head up display. It's the highest resolution head up display on a vehicle to date. As you can see there, you get lots of your navigation information and data going on in the system, obviously all fed from this that we're familiar with, which is controlled through that central unit um, in the middle with the iDrive controller replaced obviously with the Rolls-Royce logo, but much the same, the ability to scroll back through, like in the rear, the different settings and bits and bobs that you've got in there with all of your entertainment, your telephone connectivity and so forth. And you can close this away as well. You can close away the whole system so that it's a little bit tidier if you don't want it and here you've got your suspension up and down if you want to raise or lower it raise for getting over bumps or easier access lower for well looking cool and then your cameras which load up there the rear camera system um, if I actually pop it into the reverse you'll see the 360 system that you've got on the left hand side the helicopter view bird's eye view looking around that again works very neatly. Anyway, what I was going to do was turn off the engine and jump out because I wanted to show you in the engine bay have a quick glimpse at the V12. So the lever is under here. There we go. Double pull just to release it. And then we come round and lift this open. Up it goes. And there you have that engine, the 6.75, the larger engine than before. They've made the car, actually the whole length of the car is actually 10 centimeters shorter than before. It's been made smaller, however, the passenger room is larger. And the main reason for that is the ability to take out space between the engine and the dashboard. There was lots of loose space there before and also at the front as well. So it's all slightly more compact, but that's what's giving us the 571 PS or the 563 brake horsepower, depending which way you want to look at it. And the 900 Newton meters of torque, which is just absolutely crazy. So let's shut that back down. Just give it a drop into place. And then it's a little click. There we go. We are closed. And then you have, I, th I mentioned them earlier, these nice stripes, the hand painted stripes that separate out the two colors, just break them out slightly there. And then the gold coach line that runs down the side of this particular car. It's very smart. Other things to tell you, well, this car five meters and 76 centimeters. The extended is five meters and 98 centimeters, so 22 longer. The boot actually back here has 88 liters more luggage capacity than the previous car. You can see my luggage in here just to get a sense of how large it is. You can fit a lot of things. It extends quite a long way back inside, but nice and easy. Obviously that is motorized and automatically controlled from either the button there, from a button on the driver's door, also from the key, should you wish as well. And around the rear, you can see the way all the shapes come down and in towards the center, sculpting it almost back with the traditional chrome finish across the top of the boot lid as well. But quite a distinct car, a very traditional car, and one that is also loaded with features and tech, even though it doesn't instinctively initially seem that it might. And I just noticed this nice chrome finish that comes down around here surrounding this intake for cooling as well, and another one just above, all nicely integrated into the body of Phantom 8. I'm back at the wheel and we've descended from the mountains down to the road around Lake Lucerne from one beautiful environment to another. And I'm very much exploring the Rolls-Royce driving technique at the moment. You can be very, very delicate with the steering wheel, just pushing it around with a finger and a thumb to not make noise. Because if you did, if you, pushed the wheel or you started playing like that, it's pretty much the only thing you'd actually hear in here. But cruising around this beautiful scenery in this car, it just makes you feel relaxed. You feel like you've got into a spa to calm yourself down. And I presume you have that every single time you take the car out for a drive. And with the rear wheel steering it, it does pull around fairly tight corners with absolute minimal effort. This view is breathtaking. This is a wonderful place to take a car like this for a drive. This is incredible. 
and it's so so gentle yes it might be on the larger and heavier side but it's a phantom it's supposed to be it's that presence and luxuriousness you couldn't have it any other way it's just so relaxing even slows down how quickly I talk when you're driving along one thing I really like is the dials that you're looking at on the dashboard and I showed you them before but at first glance you would swear they were analog dials yet they are digital they do show you the current speed limit if you wanted to and you've got the head-up display for more information too but with the chrome surrounds around them they're just very smart and traditional and the the display looks how how you want it to look while still having some technological functionality on top of that and just cruising along it's so lovely now I must confess that I've not driven the previous generation a Phantom 7 so I can't directly compare but this car is being pitched and aimed a little bit more towards being self-driven by owners using them and driving them not just as chauffeur vehicles in the in the majority and it feels to me getting into the car and driving it like that would be the case. I've been used to the previous generation, you know, for over a decade of familiar familiarity and thinking, what would that car be like to drive, to actually go out and drive? And this feels so much more usable than I was expecting or would have in the past expected the previous car to be like. So I think you very much can, if you don't mind trying to park a six meter long car or just under, then why not? First though, just because we are driving a car with nearly 600 horsepower, let's press a low, drop it down into the low range, one gear lower, and experience some of that. The gears go down and the car picks up, and it really does have quite some pace to it. Well, you'd expect it might be heavy, but that amount of power, that torque, and away you go. Okay, not bad. Take the combination of this car, the weather we have today, and the locations that we're driving in. And I don't think you could get anything more perfect. I think cars are about their environment, their experience. And a car like this, on a day like today, is just magical. And yes, they might be mostly driven or often driven as chauffeur vehicles around city centers, for example, where again, the quietness is such a nice thing to have and not have to listen to the hustle and bustle of the city. But out here, this is, it's just something else. Anyway, let's head back and I'll have a final look around. One or two more things to let you know about and then we'll wrap it up. Back here at what is a rather magnificent hotel. It's been a big part of the event and the experiences that you may have seen other content about, but there are two more cars that I want to take a look at. And the first is this lovely extended wheelbase behind me here. So let's take a little look at some of the differences and I want to show you the interior of this car as well. Now, 22 centimeters longer. This one sits at five meters and 98 centimeters. And that additional 22 centimeters is in the rear door that you can clearly see are elongated. Now there's another marking distinguishing feature, which is the chrome strip along the lower side skirt. But have a look at the interior of this car. It has the serenity seats, which have the full lounge relaxation, lie back, foot rest, comfort, and then combine the white leather with the purple carpets that you have here. It's, it's very, very trick. And this has the fixed center console as well. So if we open up this, you can see the fridge and cooler in there, ready with your drinks as you'd like them. It's even got the TV playing, Goldfinger at the moment. But this, this is very, very luxurious. Let's just have a look in the front of this car as well. The combination of the white and the purple leather making a fairly wonderful finish. And just because I love doing it so much, close the doors. Now let's head outside, back into the sunshine by the lake, and show you one more. Venturing out to the lawn then, here we have another extended wheelbase Phantom. This is the Star of India homage, but I'm just going to take a moment to show you the hotel that Rolls-Royce have chosen for this press launch. The Park Hotel Vitznau, here on the side 
of Lake Lucerne. It's a truly beautiful and amazing location that very much embodies the lifestyle of a Rolls-Royce Phantom owner. Now this car, like I said, it's a homage with the bright orange metallic paintwork, the contrast of orange and silver, very much reminiscent of a Phantom II from 1934. And if we come around and I show you the interior, we'll take a look at the back. Again, an extended car with the chrome accent, but this has the final seating configuration with the two seats with fixed center console, so not the full Serenity seats, but with the console fixed in the center as well. So you've got the oak cluster wood inlays and the tan leather trim as well and this is well really quite nice I don't know why I'm closing the door manually when there are buttons but an umbrella finished to match as well in the black and orange pop that back in and close the door the proper way there it goes and the soft touch close so what an incredible event this has been what an amazing location and a car that you would be very hard pressed to fault on anything for what it is trying to do, for the purpose the new Rolls-Royce Phantom serves, to be the ultimate, the pinnacle of luxury on wheels. Nothing comes remotely close to touching it. Incorporate some technology behind the scenes with that level of craftsmanship, of finish and of luxury, and there's nothing better. And a day like today to enjoy it in this wonderful surroundings, this location, the roads we've been driving, has just been phenomenal. So a big thanks to Rolls-Royce for the invitation to come and join them here at this magnificent event. And I hope you've enjoyed checking out in a lot of detail the new eighth generation Rolls-Royce Phantom. So thank you very much as always for watching guys. Make sure you're subscribed for plenty more videos to come in the future. And I'll catch up with you again very, very soon. Cheers.